I need you to listen real carefully to what I'm about to tell you. Because what you did just damn near got everybody in this whole encampment killed. You gonna fly this? How much does this weigh? Does this weigh more than 250 grams? Because if you put this quadcopter in the air, the FAA killbots are gonna be on us so fast you won't even be able to get your goggles down. It's not 2020 anymore. Don't start crying on me. That's a fact. Remote ID happened. If you want to fly anything over 250 grams, you're going to have to sign your life over to the FAA. They're going to be so far up your butt, they'll be able to taste what you had for lunch. If you want to fly, you don't fly this. You fly this. It is under 250 grams. It is a five inch props. Yeah, make some compromises. How about not having your butt signed over to the government? How's that for a compromise? I'm Joshua Bardwell. It's 2024, and we can't fly anything over 250 grams. God! Ah! It's just how it is. This is the Beta FPV X Knight 5, and it might be the best 5 inch quadcopter you can get under 250 grams. That's right, this is a full 5 inch quadcopter that comes in under 250 grams with the battery. And I gotta tell you guys, I don't wanna live in a world where this needs to be a thing. In a minute, we're going to fly this quad and we're going to give it a fair shake to show us just how freaking good it could be. And I have every confidence that it's going to probably fly pretty good. But when you take a 5-inch quadcopter and you shrink it down to this weight, you give up a lot. There's no two ways around it. And the only reason to make a 5-inch quadcopter at this weight is that there are some places in the world where there is an arbitrary 250-gram limit that the government has imposed, and some people need to get under that limit. So, if you are one of those people, this might be the best quadcopter you can fly. But I don't, I don't want to be one of those people. I want to fly a 5-inch that weighs 400. Can I have 400 grams? Can I have 450 grams? 500 grams? I don't know. So what even is this quadcopter? Well, basically, we've taken a Beta FPV toothpick and scaled it up to a 5-inch size. So we've got a standard X frame with carbon fiber. The flight controller stacks on top of that with some standoff. And then there is a plastic canopy. Uh, there is full-size electronics in here, although Beta FPV has elected to use their own Tiny Whoop uh, class video transmitter. It's a pretty cool little video transmitter that almost deserves a video of its own. Um, uh, but it does have a UFL connector and a standard antenna. A lot of the times that this class of quad will have a direct soldered antenna, which means if you ever break it, you're out of luck. It's very nice that they haven't done that with this one. Um, wire loom on the arms, that's also a nice touch. These antenna holders, I guarantee uh, they are going to get chopped sooner rather than later. Just look, it can just come up. That is uh, the kind of thing, I don't know why it looks good in product shots, but it is not going to work. I was really tempted to take these antennas out and zip tie them to the arms like I usually do on most of my quads, but I thought, let's give it a chance. I guarantee they're going to get chopped though immediately. The motors on this quad are the most obvious place where this sub 250 gram 5 inch class just falls on its face. Um, these motors have a 2 millimeter shaft and I have never seen a motor with a 2 millimeter shaft that can handle 5 inch props before. The sub 250 gram 5 inch class is relatively new, but 1806 motors have been tried, like the Diatone M515 had 1806 motors with 2 millimeter shafts. It's just no way that these motors are going to survive crashes without bending the shaft, says me. We'll see if that turns out to be right, but that's my prediction. And of course the arms are ultra thin carbon fiber and I have seen people posting online pictures of these arms broken. We'll again see how that holds up to normal use. Ah, the camera looks nice. It's a high contrast camera. Um, I like a wide dynamic range camera but not everybody agrees. 
Ooh, pops up. It popped up. We would expect with it being so light, it would be super powerful. A little hitch there as I lower the throttle. Ooh, there's a hawk. Hope he doesn't come take me out. A little hitch as we lower the throttle. Maybe a torque problem with the tiny motors. You're not going to have your choice of props with this guy. You're going to need to keep the props relatively light. It got up at a low throttle position. Let's see what throttle position it hovers at. About fit, lower than t around 20% throttle hover. But it doesn't actually just shoot up in the air. It just got up at a lower throttle position than I was expecting. The up tilt is confusing me a tiny bit. So there's your first crash. Durability testing. Nope. You're not going to be turtle moding. So this is the result of the first crash. Um, the battery got pulled out. I kind of knew that was going to happen, but I wanted to give it a fair chance and let it happen instead of just being a hater. The reason for that is that this battery pad is slick and not grippy, this battery strap. Um, they could fix this problem by having a rubberized battery strap here with a grippy spot, or they could run the battery strap the other way through and have an actual battery pad here, which is what I would prefer. If I were to live with this quad on a day-to-day -day basis, I probably would put a couple of pieces of Ama grip right here, just front and behind the battery strap, so it would help hold the battery in. The, the other thing that happened is that the video transmitter just completely ejected. I'm going to guess that, I mean, yes, I did snap the antenna into the holder, but I'm going to guess it just got ripped out, and the whole thing got ripped out. So let's uh, put it back together and let's give it another try. So here are the changes I made after the first crash. I put some tape around the VTX antenna to give it a little, to keep it from pulling out. Um, and I stuffed the receiver antennas down underneath the motor wires and zip tied them to the arms. And I actually think that, I feel pretty confident that that's gonna keep them out of the props. Let's go fly some more. Little bobble at zero throttle. That may be a Betaflight 4.2 thing. Yeah, that little wobble at zero throttle is a Betaflight 4.2 thing. There are fixes for it. I'm not willing to blame the quad for that. I've also lowered the up tilt a tiny bit to be more like I normally expect, so I don't just dump it into the ground. And I'm liking it better now that the up tilt is more like I expect. I realize that this is objectively more of a racing quad than a freestyle quad but since I fly freestyle most of the time yikes setting it up like a freestyle quad makes it easier for me to evaluate VTX is doing a good job I'm not standing where I normally fly I'm flying down there was pretty far away it held in pretty good it's supposed to go up to I think 400 milliwatts respectable for a micro like this I am now enjoying flying it Oh, not a lot of uh, weight. When I hit the throttle coming off of that, coming off of that split S, it just immediately started moving as opposed to continuing forward. So as we go here, as soon as I touch the throttle, it starts going forward. It's pretty lightweight. I guess that's what you would expect. Can you freestyle it? I mean, you're not got a GoPro on it, so how much freestyle is it going to be good for? I mean. Granted, the Tiny Whoop pilots put up DVR, but most uh, most uh, pilots flying a 5-inch wouldn't be thinking about putting a DVR up. They'd be wanting a GoPro. But anyway, I'm having a nice time flying it. Good, uh, oh, prop wash handling. Pretty good prop wash handling. I got a super bent prop, so I'm not going to jump right back in the air. I can see in my camera. We're going to go uh, pick that up. Actually, I didn't have a super bent prop. It was just a trick of the camera. Go figure. I probably could have flown out of that one, except until I fixed the battery, the battery ejecting, I would not probably fly away from any crash. The battery started to eject, but didn't fully eject. I've uh, upped the up tilt a little more. Let's see if we can give it some 
more racy style. You can tell the battery's getting low. So I'm terrified of these tree branches, whereas on a, my normal five inch, I'm, I just kind of like, oh, I hit a tree branch, no big deal. Hmm, it's flying pretty good. If I were a better racing pilot, it'd be flying better. Managing the throttle through the, that move is tougher because the throttle is so sensitive because the weight is so light. Oh dear, see it didn't drop. Ha <laughs> ha! I cut the throttle but it didn't drop. I want to, it's, it didn't drop. Can I take back off? What's the VTX doing? Oh no, the VTX has dropped out. It's blacked out. What has happened? Okay, I can't take off. The VTX is just blacking out. I have no idea why. Well, unfortunately, we're not going to be flying this quadcopter anymore right now. It looks like the when the video transmitter got pulled out in the first crash, the video wire got nicked, and now it's it was working, and now it's kind of losing video, so it's not really safe to fly. And there's a motor screw missing. Oh, <laughs> there's two more motor screws missing and two more working loose. This motor is totally about to let go, so I guess if you get this quad, check your freaking motor screws before you go fly. <sighs> At the beginning of this video, I said I don't want to live in a world where this quad is necessary. You give up a lot in order to get a sub 250 gram 5 inch quad. Is this the best 250 gram, sub 255 inch you can get? I'm not prepared to make that call. There are a couple other sub 255 inches out there that I would like to try out before I try and say, oh, which one's the best. I can't decide how much of what's wrong with this quad is because of what it's trying to be and how much could be better with a little more... Oh, got a loose arm here. Yeah. The real question I think you got to ask if you are in the market for a sub 250 gram quad is would you rather have a 5 inch or would you rather have a 3 inch? 3 inches can get under sub 250 more easily than 5 inches because they have smaller motors, smaller props and just a more compact wheelbase. They don't fly like a 5 inch but this kind of doesn't fly like a 5 inch either. Doesn't fly like a 3 inch but I dare say for a lot of people here's, here's what we know. We know there are really good three inches out there under 250 grams. This is relatively new and I feel like you're giving up a lot and I'm not sure that you're getting enough back to make it worthwhile. But if you disagree, if you're living in the year 2024 and you need to stay under five inches and you definitely, definitely want, or you need to stay under 250 grams and you definitely, definitely want a five inch, there are links to the Beta FPV x Knight 5 down below. Thank you, Beta FPV, for sending it to me. I hope that they will take some of the feedback from this video into consideration and, uh, and it, maybe also secure the video transmitter inside instead of just stuffing it in there and find a way to keep this from pulling out. And The durability was better than I expected. I did crash it a few times, and as far as I can tell, I didn't break a motor. So there's that. Link in the video description. Happy flying, you guys. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Cuckoo Kaka, subscribe to my daddy.